This video is about the Second Boer War. From 1899 to 1902, the South African Republic, also called Transvaal, and the Iranian Free State fought against the entire British Empire. The British won in the end. One consequence of this conflict can be seen in the founding of the Union of South Africa. That happened on the 31st of May 1910. To the background, the Cape was originally Dutch. Dutch settlers arrived there 1647. In the aftermath, or after that, more Dutch but also French and German immigrants arrived. At this point, Bore means farmer. But during the Napoleonic Wars, British forces occupied the Cape Colony, and in 1814, the Netherlands ceded the Cape Colony to the United Kingdom. From then on, the Cape became more British. British immigration, British law, and English was the official language. Important to mention is that in 1833, slavery was abolished in the British Empire. Not all Boers were happy with this development, so they moved north to found Boer republics. This is called the Great Trek. During this time, the British took control of more territory around the coastline, along the coastline, and founded the colony of Natal. In 1852 and 1854, the Republic of Transvaal, the South African Republic, and the Iranian Free State were acknowledged. In 1877, the British Empire tried to annex the South African Republic, but they failed during the First uh, Boer War. It has to be mentioned that at the end of the 19th century, there were plans growing to, in, to expand the British Empire. Now, to the immediate prehistory. In 1886, substantial gold deposits were discovered in Transvaal. Of course, that is another motivation for the British to expand. But a gold rush was already underway, and more Britons moved into the Boer Republic. This went quite far, and the Uitlanders, Afrikaans for foreigners, threatened to outnumber the Boers in the South African Republic. The government of the South African Republic introduced higher taxes and other limitations to limit the number of foreigners. The British government demanded for the British citizens the same rights, so there was a diplomatic confrontation. Against this background, the South African Republic and the Iranian Free State formed a military alliance to counter a potential British attack. There were diplomatic efforts to solve this crisis, but the negotiations failed, and in September 1899, the British Secretary for the Colonies formally demanded the same rights for Britons in Transvaal and issued an ultimatum. The South African reaction was an ultimatum too. President Paul Kruger demanded the retreat of the British troops, otherwise he would declare war on Britain. That was perfect for the British, because now they could not be seen as the aggressor. And this is perfectly summed up by a statement from an editor of the Times, an official document is seldom amusing and useful, yet this was both. The first of the three phases of the Boer War started on the 11th of October 1899. The Boers declared war on Britain and launched an offensive into the Cape Colony and Natal. They were very successful at the beginning, because they had an innovative form of warfare. They were organizing commandos, small, very mobile units. But then they reverted to static warfare. They laid siege on Martha King, Kimberley, and Ladysmith, the three most important British towns at the border. That was, from a military point of view, a mistake. But what were the objectives of the Boers? They didn't want to gain territory, they wanted to preserve their independence. The British brought Sir Redvis Henry Bueller to South Africa with three divisions. These divisions were sent north, but they were not successful. What happened was well, the Black Week, very, very bad defeats and three battles. Now the British went on the offensive. Lord Roberts came to South Africa and he assumed command of the forces. He came with approximately 180,000 men. And during the war, there were more soldiers coming in from all parts of the British Empire. The troops went north 
And firstly, the Boers could repel a British offensive, but the might of the British forces was too much and they could relieve Ladysmith. The same happened with Kimberley, and there it was important the Battle of Paderberg, where the Boer General Piet Cronje was captured. Lord Roberts ordered the British troop to invade the Orange Free State, and they could take the capital, Blancfontein, could also relieve the siege of Marfa King, and then invaded uh, the South African Republic and Johannesburg and took the capital, Pretoria. The Boers retreated to the east of Transvaal and the northeast of the Orange Free State. The British uh, troops were pursuing them, but then the South African fighters could go back, trigger back into the heartland of their countries, but had to give up their heavy weapons. Now that was the foundation for the third phase of the Boer War, the guerrilla warfare phase. As just mentioned, the third and last phase of the Boer War started. Boer commandos launched surprise attacks on British units and then quickly retreated again. On a tactical level, they were quite successful, but these tactics did not lead to any strategic successes. In November 1900, Lord Kitchener assumed command and he implemented a new strategy. There were 8,000 blockhouses connected with barbed wire. The British also had mobile units that were sweeping through these areas hunting commanders. Furthermore, there was a strategy of scorched earth to make it impossible for the Boers to live off the land. Boer families and children were in, interned in concentration camps. That was too much for the Boers and the last commanders surrendered in May 1902. The official end of the war was the 31st of May 1902. There was a peace treaty signed. Transvaal and the Iranian Free State became parts of the British Empire. There was an amnesty and Afrikaans was accepted as an official language. The Boers received reconstruction aid of three million pounds. And Transvaal and the Orania Free State should get self-government. This development culminated in the founding of the South African Uni Union on the 31st of May 1910. That was the Boer War.